my career was short and unfortunately I've not got league medals and, and championships to talk about or playing in Europe but the one thing that I have got which takes obviously pride in on my mantelpiece um, if you were to look at it as a uh, you know a, a trophy as such is the fact that I was able to give City fans that history that one day uh, that would never be forgotten for all the fans that were there that day and, and the emotions that poured out um, you know for, for so many people for different reasons I mean I'm um, I'm writing my uh, autobiography at the moment with my wife and um, something that, that uh, I wrote down years and years ago and it was it was it was bizarre really how it affected me I was coming up to the lights at term um, because we drove up and we were there for a quarter past one for a game at three o'clock and uh, I was sat at the lights at um, Longsight Market just crawled through the lights and I think I'm gonna be late here I'm gonna panic in a little bit and I saw a dad and his son and they were stood at the the bus stop and um, I was just looking around and had music on in the background and trying to focus and trying to sort of because your heart's racing you know you're thinking about what's going to happen and your heart is racing because we were still the underdogs by the way I had no idea that Robson and Webb and Bruce weren't going to be playing so they had a really strong outfit and they were ready and we thought it's going to be we're going to do well to nick a draw here and this dad had, was sat there with his son and uh, he looked over at me and he, and he saw me <laughs> we locked eyes and he just put his hands as a, in a prayer position he just said he just mouthed the words please 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 and that is it's quite funny but it, it kind of haunted me and I thought you know that's what it means and it was days like that make you realize how important it is to people it is it is a case of that can make someone's week month year or if you're there on that day it's a memory for life it's funny because you've perfectly told a story there of just one very specific moment and of all the broadcasting and all of the interviews I've done, and I've mentioned this to you before, but one of the absolute number one quotes I've ever got from anybody was you <laughs> after that game when I said, where did that come from? How did you prepare for that game? And you said... <laughs> I had raw meat for breakfast and that, that line absolutely <laughs> just sums it up for me I had raw meat for breakfast and that was, yeah. that was what it meant to you guys and mm -hmm. that that's, I'll never leave my mind in the same way that that, that little the boy and his, his father will never mm -hmm. leave your mind it's it, amazing impacts other things that will, people will remember you for as well as some wonderful games of football of course you're a great talent you were going to be an England captain and I'm sure you would have been for many many years to come Beautiful, gifted, he won't say it himself, but a beautiful, gifted midfielder who had absolutely everything. Uh, two great feet, tackling, timing, reading the game, the lot. People will remember, particularly, the day that you almost died on the pitch, won't they, when you swallowed your tongue. Are you, do you, I don't suppose you remember much about that, do you? Well, a good friend of mine, Jeff Durbin, who was the commercial manager, uh, kindly sent me the video. Um, Which I was commentating on. I never yes. got it back. It's my video. Right. Well, you can have it back. And I've copied it since, mind. But um, he sent me a, a, a lot of tapes um, to copy for, for uh, posterity. And we had this old VHS, this um, this uh, antiquated machine. And uh, it's still, it was still working. I managed to plumb it in and put a few, a few tapes on some of your good games and, and bad games. And one of the games was the Leicester game. And I'd not twigged it was that year. And... Um, then it was um it was the um it was the incident of of the uh the last city game where i'd uh, I, I can actually tell you how how it happened uh there was a corner and trevor morley uh, had gone down in the far corner and roy bailey had, because roy was so quick he sprinted onto the pitch and he was treating uh, trevor and um the uh the guy crossing the ball for the corner he he, he didn't catch it right he sliced it and it was a diagonal ball to the edge of the box, pretty much. And I just followed the ball, just watched the ball, and attacked it. And I and I headed the ball clear off the pitch for a, for, for a throw into a good thirty-yard header. And as I followed through, his head caught me in my in my temple. And as I went over and landed, that's when um, I was completely knocked out. And um, uh, Brian Gale had summoned over to the dugout to say, "Come on, get this. He's, he's in a bit of a bad way here." And that's when I went into a, a, a state of a fit. And Steve Edmonds, I uh, can't tell you what he said, suffice it to say that he was particularly worried. And, and the guys were panicking. Um, and I was twitching, and, and all the fans could see it. And it went really, really quiet. And Dr. Luft, who was the club doctor, wonderful, wonderful man, he was sat next to Peter Swales, which seemed to be a bit ironic that he was a person needed to be pit side. And um, he had to run down as best he could, and you know, as quick as possible, and get on the pitch. 
Luckily, by that time, Roy Bailey came over to me, and with 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 Roy's particular skill and guidance, along with Dr. Luffs, they managed to get my my tongue to rest in the right position. I was in the recovery position, and I I actually came to in the first aid room under the stairs with uh, three females in tears, and it was uh, my twin sister Tracy, my mum, my then girlfriend, and then even the one of the girls from upstairs came down, and. Um, Trevor Morley sent me a card because I had to go in hospital for checkups, and the following day I had a card saying, Too Lakey, glad to see you've recovered, and thank you very much. The one time in my life I played for a proper football club and scored three goals, and guess who takes all the limelight? <laughs> you, you star, 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 star. <laughs> so that was, that, was, um, that was nice from Trevor. But it did set a precedent that from that game on, doctors had to be pit side. So uh, I had my uses in over the years, it, you know. <laughs> Not the right way to do it, I've no, got to exactly. say. So uh, the other thing, of course, is the terrible knee injury which cut short your career. You mentioned Colin Bell as being one of your heroes before, the sad sight of seeing him limping around. Who was to know that the arguably the next great talent that came along after Colin, certainly in terms of a midfielder, ends up with the same tragedy happening, not the same injury exactly, but you end up having your career curtailed at the peak of your powers. That's right, that's right. It actually started, um, we played Bradford City at home back in the old second division um, and we'd, um, we'd outplayed them. Ian, Ian Ormond Roy had played for them and he'd come to uh, Bradford at that time and um, I was playing at right back uh, with Jason Bedford, my best mate. He'd played his first game starting alongside me and we started off really well, we scored a couple of goals and uh, it was going particularly well. I went on an amazing run and found myself in the box and uh, I'd overstretched and not quite caught the ball properly. And there was a player uh, played for them at the time called Mick Kennedy, and he uh, jumped in the air and landed on on my knee with both feet. Some say it was intentional, some say it wasn't. You know, but that's a, you know for another time really. Um, going back in time would be nice actually, but um, that was the start of it really. I, I, I damaged my medial, the inside ligaments of my knee, and I stretched my cruciate ligament then, and that wasn't particularly that wasn't picked up then at, at that time, and. Um, Perhaps in hindsight, should have been addressed at, at the time, you know, simultaneously. Really, it would have been longer in my recovery, but both things would have been addressed, and it might have saved what was to come. Even to be um, not quite as quick, but maybe a full career would have been nice. Um, but that was the start of it, and then uh, I managed to get myself back fully fit for the following pre-season. Missed my holidays, worked right through the summer, got back for the first game of uh, pre-season, and played right through them. Played a, a full season. I played some like 38 games out of 42 with a, a illness and other bits and pieces. Um, and it was the following season when Howard came along. Uh, I'd impressed pre-season as a centre half by that time. Um, and uh, I, it was myself, Steve Redmond, and Colin Henry, and we were fine for the same spots. And uh, we, our first game was away against Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, Howard had said to, to me, uh, "Paul, can I have a word with you?" And I was gutted. Because I thought, here we go. Yeah, I'd lost my position in midfield. Uh, given that I go as a centre half, I thought I'd done them particularly well and competed with Colin and with Steve. But um, they were the 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 uh, the regular centre halves, and as such, I'd be the utility player that could come and step in. But I wasn't going to start, and uh, I was seething and I had my line, and I was I was quite quiet by. The changing room standards of having Peter Reed and Mark Ward and all these kind of guys in the changing rooms, I was quite quiet by their, their by their standards. And uh, but I was about to let rip to Howard, and I thought disrespectful, but I wanted to let him know that I I I, I want to play so desperately. And before I chance to finish the even start the conversation, he said, "I'm making you captain." 